Hey, welcome back. My name is Al. Today we're going to be looking at the mesh balloon feature inside of ZBrush. Before we get there, if you'd like to support this channel, check out my game Centroid. It's linked in the description below. All right, so in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the finished result. We'll just keep that on screen so you can see where we're headed. But the whole point of this was to use the new feature called mesh balloon inside of ZBrush. It's a free update, awesome tool, and I wanted to force myself to use it, create a character, for m as much of the process as I can, right? And so primarily that's just blocking out, which was super helpful. I like it a lot. Before we get too deep into this, I want to ask the Blender users out there, if you're watching this, does Blender have something like this? I feel like a year ago, two years ago, I saw Pablo tweet something that's similar to this. Please let me know in the comments below so I can use it when I hop back over to Blender. So how do you use Mesh Balloon? It is kind of listed under those masking brushes. So I can hold control or command on a Mac, go up to my brushes and it's gonna filter those, but it's called Mesh Balloon. Now I have to be holding that mask button, which is control, and then I need a mesh. So those are the things that I need. I need to select the brush and then I need to have some sort of mesh in my scene. So I'm gonna hold control, left click and drag, and I'm gonna drag out from this mesh. And the mask has lazy mouse, which is super helpful. And then when I let go, it's going to create this balloon, so to speak. So it's still in the same sub tool, but the most powerful thing about this for me is that I can very quickly block out like this dinosaur, right? I blocked out the body, the legs, the neck, the eyebrows, and since they're in their own poly groups, I can just split by masking if I want, or I can split by poly groups. That way they can be their own objects and I can adjust them separately, which is super awesome. So with snake hook, right? If I started with a sphere and pulled out these legs, you kind of, uh, kind of get lost, like pushing and pulling and stretching when really had you done a separate object to make your life a whole lot easier in most circumstances. So it's super powerful in that regard. So if you hold control, left click, drag, drag out your shape. And then if you hold shift before you let go of the mouse or let go of that control button, it's going to force that, that mesh towards the center. So for the legs, I did not hold shift, obviously. Otherwise, both of those legs, since I'm working with symmetry, would be dead center of my dinosaur. But for these, whatever they are, little armor plates, the little spines on the back, up on the neck, I held shift after each one of these, and that's gonna force it to the center, which is super, super helpful. So I could see people using this shape exploration, especially in this, right? I didn't know I was gonna make a dinosaur when I started this. So I just can draw out shapes and just kind of go wherever this leads me. Hey, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of this time lapse. We're just going to let this keep going till the end. If you felt that I earned it, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. I will catch you next time.